What is up guys? It's Chego here and today I messed, I, messed, I, I messed up real bad and real ones will know. I'll give you guys five seconds to answer down in the comments. How the frick did Chego mess up this time? Let's let's do a little countdown. Five, four, three, two, one. Okay, uh, if you guessed it correctly, you get a shout out in something, I guess. The correct answer is... Okay, so for those of y'all that guessed it, you're absolutely correct. I did not do the special event. <laughs> Nuh-uh, I didn't do it. I'm irresponsible. So we're gonna do that right now in this one episode. We're gonna speed run it so that I can get to La Sangue. I'm upset about that. Okay, let's let's do it. My bad, okay? This better be the shortest event ever. Please. So this is where I guess we meet this Lucy chick. Is she the robot with the robot woman? The robot woman that thick robot woman. There. No, I, I made it worse. Ugh. Wait, hold up. I'm not ready. Okay. Wow. So to me. So this is the library in Burton School. Oh. Our sweethearts here. So many people here. Hmm. They're probably around my age. <laughs> <laughs> Wait, someone should have told me sooner that Sotheby's in this. I've been procrastinating this so hard. So, um, it's my fault, 100%. A glorious snap green dress jumps into the library of SPDM. It, oh, its owner keeps talking in a singing, in a sing song tone, like a chirping, uh, gold crest. <laughs> We've also got this many shelves in the library of Sotheby's Manor. She is so cute. Are there any alchemy workshops and potion warehouses here? <laughs> like in our manor? I even dressed up for the new event. You know, if we're going to an opera house, you have to wear the dress code. Do I have something? <gasps> Did I put that in here just now? Don't know. Did I do that without realizing it? The young lady stands on tiptoe, looking around its place here. It, this place curiously. Where can I find Miss Boanish? Madam Z told me to come here, but who Miss Boanish? Do I know that? <sighs> the people here really need Mr. T. Kettler, who is always nice and warm huh? to the guests. Just uh. twist his teapot ear, then he can take you anywhere. Oh, she says y'all really need to learn manners for it's real. Not so. <laughs> Placing a luckaday potion at the they end. They said y'all really need to learn well. some manners for real. Can't you see I am a princess in need? If I had made it before I came, Miss Buanish and I might have met by now. Or she will just hop up behind me. Who is Miss Buanish? Are you looking for me? Oh, Matilda, my dove braid. I knew I knew that name, but she says it so differently. And she said it with like the Buanish, or like with the French. The French accent. Is that French? But she said it like that, then I would have definitely knew. Oh my word! I, I knew in my head. I know who that is, but like, you know? Oops. That was too I loud. swear. Where are my manners? <laughs> Where are your manners, Shadabi? Shadabi straightens the wrinkle on her dress and gives out her, it gives out her hand like a real lady. Oh, nice to meet you. Are you Miss Buanish? The other girl nods hesitantly. Her uniform speaks for itself. For herself. It seems to be a historic first meeting for them. That's fantastic. How did you find me? Did you see me in the Oniromancy? Or through a crystal orb? <laughs> girl. Either way, <laughs> it is the great Arcanum. <laughs> I'm much greater than that. Look at you. Dressed as if you'd just been to a ball. Okay, go roast her. as the pigment board on a sketch. Is that like a good thing or? I saw you the moment I came into the library. Oh, <laughs> yeah. <laughs> I mean, you're probably the only one dressed like that, so to be for real. Oh. <gasps> Does the foundation hold balls too? <laughs> no, I'm saying. I was mm, roasting you. <laughs> <laughs> Did I have a break and talk this way? <laughs> ah, never mind. Madame Z told me you wanted to look up the materials on the mysterious school that believes in numbers here. That's I mean, if right. they told me Sotheby was in this event, I would have done it sooner. The documents in the foundation oh, come on. It's y'all's fault. So I'll go through the books in the SPDM library. 
If what is SVD? I mean, about that school, again, we can be of more help to Burton and her team. I'm sorry, Miss Sotheby, but I'm afraid the situation is going to disappoint you. Hmm? While you spend the last hour looking for Ticketler's ear, the kind-hearted monitor assistant already gained the valuable access to the library. Aww. But I haven't found any record regarding the mysterious school that believes in numbers yet. Oh, number land. Like a bolt out of the blue. Oh, but... But Miss Morsel said there are so Ms. many books that they can cover the entire... I haven't got her in her skin yet. Beast. That's a bit exaggerated. I'm not gonna show you guys but, uh, anything until we get to the actual main first episode, which I'm also gonna pull on, just letting you know. Nevertheless, the library Should I have it at the beginning or at the end? Important position years I don't know. ago due to the storm. Many old books are not yet sorted. Some even went missing in the chaos. Hmm. The only relevant materials I could find are the stories of Pythagoras and some books on mathematical theorems. Pythagoras, Pythagoras. But I don't think they have anything to do with Vertin's issue. What Matilda sees now is a pair of tear dimmed eyes. Oh no! I can't do anything to help them. Honey. Stop being emotional. <laughs> it doesn't work on this professional member of the foundation. Okay, no. Oh my gosh, Matilda. Please. She's. A, she looks away, clears her throat like a girl. Oh. Who? <laughs> <clears throat> Without field investigation permission, I can't take you out to collect information. But in fact, there is still another reference room only known to the most outstanding monitor assistant. Mm-hmm. <gasps> Hooray! Yippee! Let's just go. Other students in the library cast just disgruntled glances at them. Shh, shh, shh. It's a violation to make noises in the library! <laughs> Please follow me, Miss Sotheby. That was the loudest whispering I've ever seen in my life. <laughs> She's like, all right! <laughs> Everyone was like... Tall shelves. Unfamiliar surroundings. As impos an impossible mission. The girls walk through the shelf like fishing, fish swimming through coral. Thank you so much, Miss Boanish. Miss Boanish. You mentioned ball. I haven't heard that word for a very long time. She wants her own ball, obviously. Like, hello? I remember what Mr. Carson, my butler, had taught me. He said, express your gratitude to fair ladies by holding a grand ball. Mm-hmm. I'll write to my father and ask for a brand new unsinkable and maneuverable rock and roll park. Oh. I'm sure he will gladly say yes. Rock and roll park? You know who else would love that? Boo, Regulus. rock and roll park? Yes. We can hold a twist ball on it when Burton and her team are back. Fingers crossed they come back in one piece. Please allow me to say no. The monitor assistant of SPDM will never participate in such an inelegant activity. You're boring. Wait, did you just say Verten and her team? Yeah, with Sonetto. Sonetto will be there. Sonetto, Sonetto, so smart. Mm -hmm. That's Sonetto. <clears throat> We yeah. can talk about the later. You want to dance with Sonetto? I'm sure you'd love to dance. You could dance with Sonetto all night. It'd be so nice. The kind-hearted Matilda Buanish will try her best to help you with the task. If she's not but, attached uh, at the hip course, to Verton. It's only out that of is. her sense of responsibility. <laughs> not for some personal reasons. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Thank you. They go faster and faster. Matilda, just be real with us for two seconds. Finally, they reach their destination. She's only not like this. She's only real when it's with Sonetto. When it's with anyone else. She's like, Hold monitor! <laughs> I am the whole monitor! The To patch the fermented eras in the future and to store the current unimportant files and reports. People built this reference room 
in the shape of a box with a gray and white walls. During this awful time, which might last for ages, people call it. The footnote of history. Here we are. The reference room storing unnecessary information. It's a place ignored by most staff. Mm -hmm. Even so, this careful, reliable monitor assistant will not let go of any details. Nice. She knocks on the rusty sign, hesitant, hauntedly. I hereby officially appoint you as the chief assistant of monitor assistant of SPDM. I will take my responsibility and teach you how to become a devoted foundation member. Chief assistant of monitor assistant? Wait, if you're a monitor assistant, so she's like your underling and you have a boss, so there's someone ahead of you. Matilda pulls off the cloth covering the archive cabinet. Dust rises in the air. Here is your first task. <laughs> Read through these unsorted old files. All of them. The monitor assistant takes a dusty file from the cabinet. The paper inside has already turned yellow. I have searched all the archived ones. These are the last parts. You guys hear that large gulp? Most yeah. of them are discarded administrative documents, low priority materials, and substandard reports written by rookie investigators. Mm -hmm. By the way, you should know I didn't sort any of them out for you, and they don't necessarily have what you want. Okay. That's all right. Leave them to me. <laughs> I love reading. Yeah, you can't upset Sotheby unless you like try really hard. <laughs> you better do. There, there's the no key, thoughts inside that safe. head. You can sit on the cushions there when you sort out the files. I I don't want your dress to stain the stone bench. Dress to stain? More like the stone to stain her dress. I'll go see if I missed any files. Listen, the dress is huge, this monitor though. assistant will test you on your familiarity with these files when she's back. How long do you think it takes Sotheby to get ready in the morning? I would think at least like a couple hours. You know, to get all this stuff on. To like probably tighten a corset or something. To like do her hair and like make sure it's all curly and nice. To like then get put this hat on. Make sure the bow is nice and big. Make sure she got two potions on deck. Like, dang. Her get ready routine will be very interesting. Get ready uh, with me Double check to completed. make Looks potions like in the foundation. Phew, quite a long day. <laughs> I doubt if that spoiled lady can finish all the materials. Spoiled. She must have been bored and fallen asleep, waiting for her tea kettle in the dream. In the dream? Okay, Matilda, don't be a jerk. This is why you get ripped to filth all the time. I think it's time you, like, go from here to, like, at least here. I promise you, if Sonetto was here, you wouldn't be talking like that. It takes Matilda, much more than Sotheby dancing is not spoiled. to be a foundation I mean, yeah, she was spoiled, but her she has a spoiled personality, you know. I'll send her back to the teacher when she wakes up. I like how you assume she's gonna fall asleep. We're talking about... Sotheby. In the end, it will be the she will keep herself entertained. Who the task for her. All Being the time. Being a great monitor assistant comes with great responsibility. <laughs> Until you gas yourself up. No wonder your ego is so big. Gas yourself up in any way, shape, or form. She back. Again, Matilda gently pushes the door open. Surprisingly, she is welcome with an energetic greeting. I'm like, did the girl look like she was sleeping? She just said she loved reading. Oh, wait. Sorry, guys. Let me get rid of my cursor. It's ruining your experience. Sorry. Oh, you're immersed. No <laughs> She's like, oh, hey. <laughs> Glad to see you're back. Standing on a ladder, Sotheby gives her a big smile with a stack of files in her hand. The files she didn't finish reading are scattered on the ground, while others have been well organized in the cabinet. You... you didn't fall asleep! Did you sort out these files? Hmm? Yes! <laughs> and I love these books in uncommon shapes. There are so many wonderful stories! I mean, Matilda. 
I often read books with Sasana when father wasn't at home. We read and read until the red ball maves so woke up the sun. Moreover, these files are much easier than Miss Moisson's reading to us. <laughs> Here, the gentleman from River Conway tamed a whole group of Avanks. How marvelous is that? Her eyes are all sparkly. Oh, okay. Looks like you meet the basic requirements for being a rookie investigator. <laughs> I mean, yeah. <laughs> plus ou moins qualifié pour être mon assistant en chef. I guess you are qualified to be my chief assistant. The young lady doesn't pay much attention to the mumbles of the monitor assistant. She is busy announcing her big discovery. And I also found this interesting report. It tells a lot about the storm and the numbers. Wait, so will these specials, uh, this like filler art could just be like short stories of what the characters are doing <gasps> while Burton and the others are on the island? Hmm? Show it to me. She takes a pile of yellow paper from Sotheby. This neat and orderly written report has no beginning or end. Obviously, the author is meticulous. Is a meticulous person. I have person. to say, it is undoubtedly a violation to submit such a report, but it will be a travesty of the truth and human sense if I cover it up. Mm. Peace, sense, sense justice. justice. They have always been the creeds in my heart, and are now the reason why I have decided to write down the whole thing. Oh. A long time has passed since the first attack of the most severe crisis in our time. This is number one. Still wondering. What on earth does it mean? That was the eve of the millennium, of which no one had any memories illogically. The next day, time was already reversed to 1996, oh, the, the moment we opened our eyes. We walked out of the building made of gray and white marble as usual, hardly Is it aware in that the though? sun we based in was from another time. Our survival was unexpected and almost unbelievable Wait, but there's in such no... a calamity which swept the globe. But they don't reverse on Numberland, do they? Well, I think they said they had like a- ugh, It's been so long. I think they said they had like a version of the storm. Well, they said something about the storm, but it went by another name. And then... And then... If I can remember correctly, it was like 2000 something, right? So the storm didn't even- 2001? So I'm like, what? Why did the headquarters of the Foundation survive the reverse? Why couldn't we find our younger selves in the outside world? Did any other region survive it as we did? Mm. What was the cause behind this calamity? That is so confusing. I'm not gonna lie. Like, it... I don't think they'll talk about it till 1.9 because I think it was in the the little short with Regulus, Medicine Pocket, and X. I didn't know, nor did anyone else. Things remained unclear until time was reversed again. This time, we all witnessed that rain in the 80s. Hmm? Ugh, spell it out to me, ma'am. What the frick is she talking about? <gasps> These files that in needs? I, I think so. Ooh. She says in a trembling voice. This monitor assistant, who always claims to have a cool head, has never panicked so much. It's a report written by someone who witnessed the storm! Crazy. To think they put it in this archive room of uselessness, right? And it has recorded the storms before Burton became the timekeeper! Question? Was there a timekeeper before Burton? Hmm. Interesting. To be continued. We don't like the storm here. Oh, I guess it's not just little episodes because we're continuing. Soaked science. Before she became the timekeeper? Was there another timekeeper? Oh. So Vertin wasn't born a timekeeper. <laughs> I mean, she was born with the skills, but like, they, she turned into- Matilda, do you not remember? <laughs> Hello, Matilda, you were there. Well, she wasn't there there, but like, 
Did she what did she not know Virgin became the timekeeper after everyone else reversed? Did she not know that? What? <laughs> Matilda, hello! You were there in that time? Yeah. She didn't tell you that? Wait, no one oh. is born a timekeeper. She knew that. It's not an inherited title. She knew that. Okay. Matilda, you're about to lose me if you didn't know. Anyway, this report includes the secret chronology only accessible to the core members of the Foundation. You can only check it under the supervision of the Monitor Assistant before you become a qualified investigator. Oh. Matilda dusts off the folder carefully. No matter what the reason is, it shouldn't have been shoved in this dusty room like rubbish. To evaluate its uh, authenticity and risk, the genius Matilda Buanish will fulfill her duty as the monitor assistant and carry out a thorough inspection of this report. Nice. If you agree to this resolution, please nod, Assistant Sotheby. She's gonna nod. The speech of full of terminology Sotheby has never heard before. But it doesn't matter. Based on the tone of the speech, she has already decided how to answer. Yes, yes, of course. <laughs> uh, I love Sotheby. She's so cool and funny. That was 1985. Storm in 1985. A gloomy, miserable night compared to that peaceful morning in 1996 when we were only bothered by confusion. Mm. We didn't expect time to be reversed again. Nor did we understand the consequence. Mm. Even now, I still remember Paulina's desperate cry. One of her hands was already inside the safe area when she fell at the entrance to the headquarters. Oh. And that was the only part of her left to us the next second. That the is... The legacies we found were an engagement ring on that hand. What? Wait, what? And that was the only part... Ew! Her hair was just and left. Her favorite blue polka dot scarf, which we used to wrap. So a decapitated hand. Oh. To be honest. A detached I hand. Those who still remained calm and sympathized with the arcanists on the edge of mental breakdown. It had nothing to do with the one quarter arcanist blood in my body. One quarter. It was only the kind of empathy which all mankind would share out of instinct in the face of a hopeless calamity. One wrong move, woman, you can remove Arcanus completely from your bloodline. <laughs> we lost many, too many colleagues. In the materials they sent back, we I even saw all the horrifying phenomena, or such father. as one's veins turning into electric wires. Dang. Since then, the storm, a word simply taken from visual observation, has been used to refer to the calamity. No. That would mean... That would make her mom one quarter. That means like... Wait, how does a quarter work? One quarter. One, two, three, four. That means her mom would have been a... Don't know. Don't know. Of course, we can have a word for the calamity itself. But what words should we use to conclude all the absurdity and panic? Before oh. the storm, we were all familiar with time. It was supposed to be a straight line connecting the past and the future. We followed the line to move forward. We broke free from ignorance. We built civilizations. We developed technologies, we promoted the well-being of mankind, and we improved our living conditions step by step. I know, right? Slay! So, oh! <laughs> the uh, I was away all of a sudden. We were so sure that we were making progress on the right path. Oh, time. Our closest old friend, where are you taking us? Backwards. Back to the two most painful war times in the 20th century. The era when no one had ever heard the hiss of steam engines. 
or the century when mankind was yet to be enlightened. You know, now that she says that, that is actually terrible. Going back to a time pre-internet, <laughs> when you're already so used to it, it's like, oh my gosh, it's like getting isekai to another world. <laughs> so far, mankind has achieved a lot in history. Dynamos, automobiles, flyovers, railways, hospitals, poorhouses. But if it goes on like this, what is the point of all the efforts we have made? True. Oh my gosh, she's so now right. We are like a shipwreck left on the island of time, witnessing the fall of the they whole modern They make progress, world. but then and all the progress just gets erased. Then, like, what's the point? The knowledge, I guess, that can't be erased. Staff members, they are still Experience doing compared to Laplace. My younger brother was a good example. He was the most sensible person I have ever known. Why don't you just day, like invent verse, stuff? Me, in a calm manner. Like every moment in history, you could like be a genius. <laughs> I'm like, oh, I invented electricity. Oh, I invented electricity again. <laughs> like, just keep reinventing the same stuff, and you will keep being famous. You can take other people's ideas because they're going to be reversed, and then they're your ideas. At least we have reaffirmed that Newton was right. There was never an arrow of time in classical mechanics. <laughs> Neither in relativity nor quantum mechanics. That means this is absolutely normal. Whether the time goes backwards or forwards, even if it starts spinning around like a tabletop football player, we are not against the law of physics. We can go back in time and give Poincaré a medal of great profit. His voice is kind of funny. The next day, he almost fell off the sixth floor due to excessive drinking. Your brother was an alcoholic. All the perceptions of time and space developed to this day were overthrown. We couldn't find any theories to explain the storm in any existing researches. There could only be two reasons for this situation. Either we've been completely wrong all the time. Or we've come to a brand new world. And this new world can never make sense in the way of science. Or that of physics. It cannot be verified by an independent third party. And it is impossible to be comprehended through reasoning. Mm. Is it true that we have been going the wrong way? Is it true that those once proven wrong by history... Those arcanists who claim to possess Gnosis are actually on the right path. What's Gnosis? In fact, oh, the one who put an end to the chaos was indeed not a human. It was a thick robot lady. This thing. I had no idea what it was. Someone said it she was an awakened arcanist, right? Stops working. It laughed at the limitations of our brains and the metaphysical mistakes we make ceaselessly. She's like, you can't do this? Skill issue. You need to sleep? Skill issue. You need to eat? Skill issue. You need water? Skill issue. I used to learn to look more but at the camera instead of myself. <laughs> I look at myself, but I need to look at you guys. After it took charge of Laplace. The first measure it adopted was contacting all the existing branches of the foundations at the time to confirm the scale of available manpower. Then it built observation stations all over the globe to find if there were any other regions immune to the storm. Wait, so she's a awakened Arcanus. So was the robot before or after? Like, is it like the it's like the chicken or the egg thing? Like, what came first? <laughs> after that, numerous officers were. Did they make a thick robot the before it awakened as a person? Even though there were countless disagreements during the research. At least we had taken the first step. Or did or did she just appear as like a thick robot? I handed in the application to take part in this mission, determined to get rid of the fog in my mind. In 1986, I was assigned to the office in Egypt. All my friends came to the dock to see me off, because we knew it could be the final goodbye. Even though we were equipped with the emergency communication devices issued by Laplace, we were still not clear when the storm would assault us or where we could hide nearby. Mm. What really scared me was not the threat to my life, but the possibility of dying ignorant. You know, while they're storytelling, I don't have to click. Then I boarded the ship to Alexandria from Athens. And that was when I met her. Her. Thick robot lady? Now when I recall it, 
It was almost impossible to ignore that group of arcanists on the ship. There were about a dozen of them, all in eccentric stitched robes. They were followers of a strange school which mixes arcanum and mathematics. Oh. I talked to them. Oh, Numberland! No matter how much that conversation bewilders me now, I was more excited Who and confused me? at the time. Who ate They also me? survived the storm in 1996, <laughs> and they noticed the unusual changes taking place in the world as well. Mm. That means I actually met another group of survivors uh, from the Millennium. Oh my gosh. Matilda, isn't that insane, girl? Like, a girl? She stops turning the pages. Ooh, wait, Numberland. Wait. She discovered Numberland. A school of Arcanists who survived the storm? Numberland. We're gonna be talking about the circle. 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 Okay. Um, oh. Tower of Babel? <coughs> Interesting. I saw Soneto. No, that's not Soneto. Isn't that 37 and uh, A mixture of Arcanum and mathematics. The ship on the Mediterranean. Same way. Unbelievable. Our investigator actually met this group of Arcanists who believed in numbers and even left such a precious record down on paper. And we just threw it away into the record room to be forgotten. Does it mean we are close to being helpful to Virgin? You know what it does mean? It means that Matilda was wrong. The chief assistant of monitor of the monitor assistant. Let's add a cheer. Hooray! Certain. It's what we deserve for all the efforts today. Hmm. But what okay, for all of one person's efforts. Reference room storing unnecessary information. The only person who actually put in effort was <laughs> Sotheby. You cannot take the credit. All you did was let her in the room. She did all the reading. She found the paper. Did they miss put it here after the chaos of the storm? Mm. Putting her confusion aside, Matilda turns the next page of the record. Among them, the most easygoing one was Hugh. Hugh? He was an engineer, as well as an arcanist. We shared the same preference for human technology, and that became our common topic. Mm. Hugh was in his thirties, red-haired, red -haired. cheeks sunken, and deeply depressed due to some kind of eye disease. Oh. Oh. He was a decent man, Sounds... with a prudent attitude. Working at a desk most of the time. He reminded me of the Imperial miniature painting artists in the Sultan's palace. Most mm. of them ended up blind after toiling for their life. What? He showed me the picture of his daughter. I don't have children, but I could feel his happiness as a father. Hmm. Although I got along well with you. Blind? He seemed quite out of place among that group. Who else is blind in reverse 1999? Which was actually led by her. Is that 37's mommy? I don't know what words to use to describe her. She was like a meteor shower, a tempest, or an unreasonable catastrophe itself. Her mother that she just like, oh, she died? was just like her <laughs> name. It was simple, yet implied a lot. No wonder 37 is a orders. genius. The Even smartness now, came down. The gene, down her name, gene pool. If one would call that a name. In fact, she was quite a kind, warm hearted person. Among all the unregistered arcanists I've met, she was one of the nicest ones towards the foundation. Hmm. She looked young, even though I heard she had a daughter too. Oh, 37. Besides, she still possessed the innocence of a child. And that kind of excitement, exclusive for genius. That's right. It seems the whole world was like a sparkling toy to her. <laughs> That's kind of funny. Our communication was heart stirring at the beginning. I'm trying to lock in guys, so if I'm not telling very much. What was happening. Like two shipwrecked victims grappling at each other on the sea. But I didn't have the slightest idea what she was talking about, actually. 
Mm. The problem was Numbers. not the typical communication issues between humans Circle. and arcanists. Circle society. I was sure the language we used didn't pose any obstacles. But still, I couldn't understand any words of hers. I would believe that one is highly intelligent if one can name all the factors of 11,567 without thinking. I mean, yeah. But that what sense. this one said was illogical nonsense, which no one could ever imagine. Okay, calling she her this one is crazy. Above all else, where the non-physical essences of all things exist in the form of timeless, absolute, unchangeable ideas, and that the physical world where the time flows is nothing but an appendage which has never been real or true. Mm. And that's why the chaos in this world is not worth any attention and we should focus on what happened to the supreme existence. Mm. What an utter disaster combining modern maths with the ancient superstition. <laughs> I saw another <laughs> hubristic arcanist pretending to be the prophet by reliving Platonism. I mean, she was that girl. I don't even bother to mention the balderdash on soul numbers. Even the new uh, age uh, woman, you're speaking gibberish to me. You. <laughs> but that was not yet. Both of y'all sound crazy to me, she but you even know. claimed to be aware of the exact year when the next reverse would happen. But That's when big. I asked her about it seriously, she, she said, said <laughs> "I'm kidding." My apologies. I've made an oath. I shall and only shall reveal the demonstration to people who have their own soul numbers. Oh, she said you not I'm special. I'm not sure whether she was making fun of me or being serious. She's being but serious. I have that she, she said you don't need to, to know how she was granted the secret. Just get to a moment of a flight. A number. Girl, it seemed <laughs> she just saw through the laws behind all things instead of finding them through logical deduction. Yeah, she just knew. Can't she you just see that it? smart. It is right in front of you. She's like, what? You can't see it? After I expressed <gasps> my inability to comprehend, she, she should have taught thirty-seven times, some manners, because she'd she be telling people whole everything. Regrets. She's like, you don't know I'd your number? Well, um, it's five. So, what really yeah, irritated me about sucks, that, right? However, like, was her contempt towards you're not a prime number, and all the scientific you don't divide evenly. <laughs> I'm kidding. I don't know what a prime number is. Uh, <laughs> as far as I'm concerned, the value of a theory is the its reliability, she... universality and generalizability oh, our pursuit of the truth has laid the foundation Who of modern science, beans? allowing us to change the world and focus yet in her eyes the value of a theory lies in its beauty because she can see it i talked to her on the current situation she and i told it. her how we would save lives right? and preserve the hard-earned technology of mankind if we could find the pattern. Did she say, ah, oh, sounds real boring. I have a kid. It was, of course, not an easy thing <laughs> to do and would take enormous manpower. She's like, I got a I daughter. A daughter. Yeah. Oh, no, she Yet probably again, did she not want to join. Contempt. She said, she Numberland they would only become another is military my place. squad of the foundations. Yeah, she said, Numberland Darling, and just Numberland. That's so beautiful for their uselessness. That's why it remains noble and graceful in this sordid world, despite oh. you humans' reckless action of using it to calculate ballistic. She's like, I want no part, thank she you. She turned down my invitation and left an But how did Manus end up on the on island when they're like project. the same crap? <laughs> the observation stations you built are destined to be toppled because observation this is a fragile world that follows the laws of physics. The efforts you've made are like nails on a sand beach, which will only be carried away by the next tidal wave. Oh my gosh. I don't know but how I you said, talk to her. Perhaps she calls you dumb in like me, so many ways. Someone has to do it. Like she, she says you're stupid in like the smartest, most the intelligent ways possible. The world we are living in is and I'm like, how do you not mean? get insulted? <laughs> <laughs> She could call you dumb in six different ways, and you wouldn't even know. Speech. But see, see? <laughs> the world is a hopeless ruin. The conversation ended like in She insults you in smart. I don't know why Arcanists hate the intelligent. world so much. Perhaps the reason is they have never been truly accepted. Ooh. To Let's this talk day, about I it. still remember her venomous conclusion. The world built on past experiences has ended. 
In your words, which you use to mock us, Ooh. why not embrace the reality? Ooh, ooh, ooh! She's ripping you Yet to filth. about the gnosis which she you deeply believed in, <laughs> and the so-called prophecies okay. she made through numbers. She had never given any proofs or details. In your true, words, rigorous why logic. not embrace reality, sweetheart? And the reason for her inactions was, <laughs> was an oath she had made before some stone. Yeah. Therefore, I believed her words, but only the nonsense of a lunatic. Well, I mean, you when can't just met, disrespect the way they do things like that. Psychos. Everyone lives their the life differently, ma'am. Cortex as the will of God. But they turned out to be the same. In the name of human sense, I swore everything she said was absurd and ridiculous to me. Until. Until. Well, you know, 37's mom died in a shipwreck, right? With her dad. Hmm. Like Madame Z said the arcanists on that island are all named after numbers because they have a strong belief that numbers are the essence of their souls. This deep. The investigator wouldn't write down her name. Is it because of the conflict between their beliefs? Maybe it's because she got beef with her. Matilda, it's not that deep. Anyway, Matilda turns to the next page eagerly, as if checking a novel brought in by class. Uh, in class by some undiscipled, undisciplined student. But the reality welcomes her with an empty page. Huh? That's all? Maybe because the story ends with an abrupt stop. Or the hope just raised as dash down. Frick, am I reading this correctly? Matilda clenches her handkerchief with her sweaty palm. Submitting such an unfinished report would only cause problems for the reviewers and evaluators. So itchy. But this investigator didn't even write down their name. I mean, we know who it is, you know, with hindsight. Don't worry, Miss Bonish. I'm familiar with this situation. Every time after the brave Typhon defeats Jupiter, he returns to the Auto Island. Yes. But each time we twist the ear of Mr. Glassbox, Typhon will show up again and again. Ms. Moisson told me, the ear is the key to bringing back our hope. Is Ms. Moisson her teacher? <laughs> Wait, don't tell me you are talking about the shows on the mechanical television. <laughs> Matilda Garrelly, she's too busy stalking Sonetto in her orb. <laughs> Ignoring the monitor's assistant confusion, the enthusiastic young lady starts looking around for the ear that carries all her hope. Stop, uh, stop, Miss Sotheby. Please, take a seat on the cushion and listen to me carefully. <laughs> she's not listening. This? is a detailed report written by a formal investigator of the foundations, not some TV show full of cliffhangers. That means we will definitely find the rest somewhere. That is so funny. Oh, I see. Must be a Coco Treant who took away the other part of the book. Huh? Usually, they will be attracted by Luna Fixer, and by following their traces, will find their lairs in the stable. Uh huh. You mean someone took it away? Hmm. That's highly possible. Data loss is not allowed in the foundation, especially under the monitor assistance management. Yeah, Matilda would be freaking put in the shed if they freaking found out she lost some important information. We must prepare Luna Fixer. Don't forget their favorite jigging magical beans. Who ate beans? Hmm. <sighs> I don't have those materials with me. Do I right sound now, like her? Be real. Write to them. It only when I say that, in my head, I feel like I do. The disconcerting conversation is clearly too much for this rigorous monitor assistant. Nah, -uh, we don't need that. They did not have to make her say nah. -uh. I need to clip that. <laughs> <laughs> That's gonna be a stream sound now. Until they're going, nah. -uh. That is a stream sound. I'm gonna use it for something, for sure. An alert. <laughs> After taking a deep breath, Matilda takes out her crystal orb. Nuh-uh. 
and a vicious smile spreads over her face. Nuh-uh. You've perfectly accomplished the task from me when you found this valuable report. Well done, Assistant Sotheby. Now you both are assistants, which is kind of confusing. show a little bit of her greatness. Okay. Put that arcanum to work, girly. Nuh-uh. <laughs> Never in my wildest dreams did I think the girly pot would say nuh uh. But nuh uh, I guess. Nuh uh. Where are we now? There is no moonlight during the daytime. <laughs> but the moon is not the only choice for divination. Mm. Judging from the omen, it's at the northwest. The beginning and the ending of the ring. Where the wall reflects repeatedly. Holding the crystal orb with both hands, Matilda keeps adjusting her position while trying to find out the vague vision in the sphere. Sotheby follows her with a curious <laughs> I just, I just imagine Sotheby like looking over her shoulder, like, is it working? Hmm. <laughs> and Matilda's just like, <laughs> and Sotheby's like. <laughs> The northwest of SPDM. This one is straightforward. The beginning and the ending of the ring is not a problem either. The icon of the computing center is exactly the Ouroboros, a serpent eating its own tail. Here we but Oh, here we are. Where the war Oops. reflects repeatedly. Does that mean a closed room with mirrors? Mm. The mirror in the display center is a huge kinescope in the wall. And the one in the airtight laboratory is a crystal clear observation window. You know something I noticed? Um, people in the foundation actually have drip more than people in Manus, honestly. Foundation drip is more drippy. I mean, I, I would wear that. I'd wear this outfit. It looks comfortable. The cardigan. The one like I'm, every the time I'm just like the cardigan center? looks so fluffy. No, no, no. The mirrors in the operation room have been replaced with curved electronic screens of steel structure after that Zeno pilot made a scene. So, where is the answer? Thinking. She slowly turns around, trying to find the perfect angle for a clear vision. A white figure storms away with her side, almost bumping off the orb she tightly holds. Hey! You just hit me! Shouldn't you apologize? Hey, so how many polite kids are actually in the foundation? <sighs> oh, we're talking about a grown adult. Where did you come from, dork? Wasting my time? <laughs> you did not just call Matilda a dork! You're a researcher! Dorks are dumb nerds, okay, guys? Ha! Freak no, first off. Say it off, you're the dork. Dork. She might be a little nerdy and a little bit of a geek, but you're a dork, okay? A dumb nerd. Researcher. Your, your name is Researcher. Like, how are you gonna call her a dork? The man groans a curse and hesitantly leaves this place with his hands covering his nose and mouth. What? what the How frick? could he say that? That's rude! <laughs> he calls her a dork! <laughs> Matilda, to be honest, there's worse things you could be called. <laughs> that gentleman doesn't look well. He's covering his face. His nose is running with purple liquid. Oh dear. Did he drink a whole bottle of purple chrysandra juice? Uh-oh. He needs yeah, treatment okay. immediately. Oh... If only I had brought the Phoenix heart nerves with me. <sighs> if only. He ran towards the rehab center. Hmm. Nothing to worry about. Just another patient trying to prove he has recovered. <laughs> Where the way, dork? The hasty man disappeared completely. The little incident doesn't ra raise anyone's attention. The rehab center has all the facilities and medicines he needs. He will be properly treated. But... Why is he wearing the uniform of Laplace? Because one of their experiments clearly went wrong. Hmm. And where's the receptionist here? 
The lobby of the scientific computing center welcomes them with a defiant, with a deafening silence. This encounter is no longer busy uh, with people, but with an auto recognition device instead. Does everyone go to the weekend party night? <laughs> Probing around the counter, the temporary investigator seems determined to dig out a party gro gramophone from somewhere? Absolutely not. The researchers here are too busy to do that. <laughs> the computing center is working on the They're most funny urgent duo. and vital project. The research on the immunity to the storm. Regulus Matilda would be an even funnier duo, though. <laughs> Regulus Matilda would be so funny. Regulus anyone's funny, but Regulus Matilda, because Matilda's uptight, and Regulus is more, like, loose, like, chill, you know? So it's like... I mean, Sotheby's kind of like... She, she'll she do... Like, I feel like she's kind of like... Matilda could be mean, and Sotheby wouldn't even notice, for real. Or Matilda could be joking, and Sotheby wouldn't know. Like, it's a cute, cute dynamic, but, like, with Regulus and... It's going to be so funny. So please stop calling the office and put down the telephone, Miss Sotheby. This is not the Sotheby is like a, a dog, a puppy. 20 twist balls. <laughs> the monitor assistant can't stand the difference in their terminology anymore. I know she's a rookie, but even so, she's way too unbelievable. Like new members with caution and patience, trigger the reflatus at the right time. <sighs> I have to admit, Merton's doing it better than me for now. Her mumbling is interrupted by her by the owner of the cheerful footsteps. Miss Boonish, I just read the map on the counter. <laughs> Good job, Sotheby. She is like a little puppy, bro. You mentioned where the wall reflects repeatedly. Does the vision refer to the racquetball center here? You see, its icon is a bouncing ball. <gasps> Let me take a look. This has been fun. I like this. Found it. This is really the right direction. I thought there was going to be a bunch of new characters. I like this. Next, empty boxes, glasswares, and copper pieces. Hmm. Looks like our destination has piles of metal. The vision in the orb is glowing clearly, providing that they are proving that they are heading in the right direction. That eases Matilda's upset mind. Um, good job, Assistant Sotheby. Sotheby's doing all the work, Matilda. I don't know. I don't know, girly. Sotheby might have to get a promotion. I have to say, I have gone a bit too hard on you. You are more capable than I thought. Thanks to your prompt reminder, we have saved quite some time. Two. Two times she is she's done all the work. Sotheby is glad to help. The young lady gladly hops along <laughs> the way. While she doesn't give up peering at Matilda's crystal or <laughs> she's so <laughs> precious. Miss Boonish. You're such a talented diviner. Why don't you just divine the reason for the storm with your inherited arcanum ability? That's a good question. According to Ms. Muscle, the reason still remains a mystery. If the crystal orb can reveal its truth, everything will be much easier for Vertin and her team. Mm hmm. They, they find the reason for the storm? You ever thought about doing that? The brave assumption astonishes this is a great diviner. She almost drops the orb. That's impossible for sure. Why? It's a typical mistake of layman's to believe one can see everything through divination. You are an expert on potions and arcane creatures, but you have little knowledge on other subjects. Haven't you received any systematic education on arcanum? Education on arcanum? I'm, of course, well-educated in Arcanum, with Ms. Mosso as my tutor, and my Arcane friends such as Typhon from the Auto Island, Jupiter, and... She shakes her hand, stopping her from listening, from listing another name 
for an arcade creature that nobody has ever heard of. <laughs> I have understood the fact that the education you have received is not uh, systematical. Or say, incomplete, imperfect, inelegant. Okay. <clears throat> but don't worry, because you are talking to the kind-hearted Matilda. She will spend her valuable time to make it up for you. Okay. The great monitor assistant clears her throat and starts recalling what she learned when she was 12. In fact, the system of arcanum knowledge is not completely separated from that of human science. For example, the modern pharmacy and chemistry actually originated from the experiments of potions and alchemy in the ancient times. Oh my gosh, she's yapping. They developed into two Ugh. different systems because arcanists focused more on the knowledge ignored by scientists. Which is Gnosis. Uh, I'm bored. <sighs> the knowledge oh, in the world of the is exactly under this category. Wow. So the bee's enthusiastic about anything. So these eyes light up with amazement. Matilda takes out her notebook and draws a brief sketch in it. Wanna see? Ooh. Let me fill you in with more details. If two human researchers test Snell's law at two different places at the same time without making any mistakes, they will always reach the same conclusion. Okay. Or if two potionists use the same ingredients and follow the same formula to make the cough cough stop stop potion separately, their products will also have similar effects. Cough cough stop stop. However, if two diviners respectively perform divination on the same thing, they will probably see totally different visions. Hmm, why is that? Because what the divination shows is merely omens. The interpretation of these omens is in fact a kind of subjective deduction based on the reality, and there is no such thing as a standard answer. Even if the two you dumb down, draw the same conclusion, it is more of a coincidence than a result that implies generalizability. So diviners never check the accuracy of their divination through the review of peers. And this is an example of gnosis. Unlike human sense, it is unique and possesses no universality. Uh huh. She puts away. She puts it away and wiggles her index finger. In other words. Even if someone finds out a reason for the storm through divination, they can't have other oh. diviners verify it because a hundred different diviners will give out a hundred different conclusions. The scene will be even busier than a concert at Music Verein. That is actually really intelligent. Thank you. That being said, the more possible result we get from the divination is nothing. Divination cannot bring knowledge which the diviners have never learned. The divination of such world-class knowledge, as complicated as the reason for the storm, can only be performed by world-class diviners. So do those exist? We may find one or two diviners like that if time continues to be reversed. Like Nostradamus. Hmm. But he lived in the 16th century. Oh, so we just need a place that reversed in this into the 16th century then. Hmm, was it Nostradamus? Besides, even Nostradamus is not always right. But, but Miss Boanish is! <laughs> <laughs> oh, Sotheby. Thanks your divination. We're getting closer and closer to that report, right? Oh, Sotheby. Uh, you, 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 you are right! Finding items, interpreting dreams, and making simple prophecies. All these things are just a breeze for the bright and clever Matilda. <laughs> keep, keep gassing her up, Sotheby. But inquiring about the storm is beyond my ability, and it will only bring misfortune. Hm, I will never make such a stupid mistake. I mean, she know better. Matilda regains her radiant appearance. In fact, this half of the report and the handwriting of the author are perfect divination media. Besides, our target is not far away from us, and I'm familiar with the surroundings, which have made things much easier than usual. It is true diviners can improve the accuracy and controllability of their gnosis by practicing repeatedly, holding the rituals properly, and making targeted preparations. But that still doesn't mean the result will be absolutely accurate. Sylvie nods. No one can tell from her face whether she truly understands that announcement or not. <laughs> 
Reading the vision in the orb, Matilda leads Sotheby around another corner nimbly. The report nimbly. says that person who mentioned the school of numbers claimed she was enlightened about the year of the next storm. Is that also by divination? Hmm. I am not sure what kind of arcane skills they used, but numbers are indeed a kind of omen, too. I am not talking about the specific knowledge of mathematics, but the numbers themselves, because they are even more abstract than images and languages as kind of symbol. Hmm. Even so, there is no way for us to verify this prophet, unless it really comes true. That is also why it takes almost nothing to spread a prophecy. My mother told me many people in the outside world write to the Foundation every day, claiming to be prophets who can predict the doomsday and thus requesting unemployment benefits. The doomsday? Unemployment benefits? Oh my! The outside world is far more wonderful than I thought! How fascinating! Did she not live in the outside world? The Spoonish is even greater than I expected. Sotheby? Did Sotheby not live in the outside world? I'm confused. <laughs> you bet! W wait, D did you mean I was not the greatest? Yeah, you you are now. So... That is good for us. Ooh. They have reached the end of the corridor. Matilda puts away her orb and looks at the wooden door with no sign in front of her. This is where the vision leads them to. The room next to the racquetball center. Here we are, Miss Sotheby. Now, this is the moment to verify the results of my divination. Let's do it. Squeak. She opens the door with a slight push. Oh. 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 Here. If you look at the ground after the rain, uh, you can often see I a wet long about trail her. like this one. Fine, I'll listen at to At the her. end of the trail there may be a snail slowly crawling forward. Oh my gosh, I completely yes. forgot about her with forward. all these events, bro. The snail marks the direction for us. But what if we don't see any snails at either end? How are we going to distinguish the direction to the future from that to the past? Huh. Criterion. Well said, darling. Oh. To figure something out, you always need to make deductions based on facts you know what? and logical That made me reasoning. feel good. I feel good about that. What you see is not necessarily true, but what is logical is, because we haven't witnessed or experienced anything illogical so far. If something like that actually happens, it must be because we are too ignorant to understand it for the moment. This point was firmly believed by those researchers who worked in the house like canned sardines. It remained true to them until the first drop of rain rose. The sardines suddenly found that the knowledge they possessed couldn't support the point anymore. The can was open, revealing a completely different thinking pattern to them. <sighs> Whatever they used to mend the can, there was still a crevice left between the inside and the outside, and it could be ripped open again at any time. What happened then? The chaos didn't last. If it really was the rain that swept away the snail and messed up time, then we should look at the silver lining. Does Her voice just makes me want to go to sleep. I'm not going to lie. I'm skipping it. I'm so sorry. I could not listen to her any longer. That was putting me to sleep, Loki. I wonder how long this special event is. I didn't think it would be as long as like a regular one since it was smaller, you know? So. The Tenley Time Motel. The light is dim here. Archive cabinets and unorganized files are everywhere, punctuated w by strange devices in Laplace style. It seems like an abandoned utility room. <coughs> Where are we? 
Lost and found of the racquetball center. She waves away the dust and struggles her way uh, along the toppling cabinets. Hmm. The orb showed copper pieces. We need to find something that seems to be locked, but is actually not. <laughs> found it! Nothing can stop the genius, Matilda. Nothing. She finds what she was looking for in a rusty drum. Obviously, the reports have been here for a very long time. It's corners... Cr <clears throat> Curl because of the damp air. Luckily, the writing is still recognizable. Ooh, story. The trip to Egypt didn't go smoothly. The ship was hit by a common storm at sea. We were lost in the fog after that. Completely off course. Nightmare has been messed up and for a while, guys. From the water. I'm so Since the first working storm, on it. The foundation has received frequent sightings of arcane creatures. I think it's allergies. In history. I had no idea what I was shooting at, even after I emptied the clip. And I didn't know what to do. Those arcanists brought us back on course. She names the precise longitude and latitude of our location, even without using the sextant in the spare cabin. I wonder how she did that. Perhaps the world did look different in her eyes. I had a trash can right there. <laughs> I she suddenly that. dragged me back. I thought it was only an inappropriate joke. But the next second, the plank broke. Oh. I was stunned. And as to how she saw that coming, she just answered me as if we were talking about the weather. Mm -hmm. Because that plank is deformed like a rhombus. <laughs> I was confused. Girl. Where is the rhombus? She laughed. Can you not see it, you dumb, dummy, dumb, dumb? You shall close your eyes. You're not special. Hearken to the teaching of the supreme existence and seize the moment of afflatus. <laughs> of course, I didn't see anything. Nor did I understand what the moment of afflatus was. Perhaps it's just another privilege enjoyed by arcanists, just like their right to be lunatic. Dang. Nevertheless, she reached. Thirty-seven the is definitely her in a child. Completely wrong way. For sure, for sure. Is it sure. really possible? And that redhead guy, anyway, you think that's Sophia's she dad? She saved my life. But that was not enough to settle the differences between us. She remained rejective to working with the Foundation. Uh, yeah. And I finally gave up on the attempt to persuade them. Uh, yeah. My mission on that trip was not to make contact with them. Besides, what we needed was builders of the Storm Observation System. Not some liars who would only make things worse. Uh. As for the shelter they took from the storm, them. She wouldn't say a word as if she were dealing with a spy who pried to find out the deepest secrets of the arcanists. Mm. In the end, Hugh mediated between us. He gave me an address in Istanbul to which I could send the letters to contact them. After that, I spent more than half a year in the Egypt office. Things were even worse there than I expected. Some have gone missing after the storm. The people who were supposed to be in the Egypt office, according to the member list stored in the headquarters in 1985, were not there when I arrived. Oof. The situation could be caused by the limitations of... Is the there like a... So there's no set materials. time for the storm. The storm just happens the whenever... Was not yet popularized Because I kind of thought it just happens at 1999 every... Could develop into every a time. Difference. Besides that... The chaos in the just Lachess random was an even worse issue. Ooh. I learned that someone published the paper Samplings of Global and Regional Chaotic Energy Root Changes in the name of Butterfly of Lorenz. Well, for you. Apparently, they secretly used our sampling sites, yet their research direction and conclusion are radically different from Laplace's. The researchers equally divided into two schools. One, sticking to the human technology they have focused on. And one, changing their direction to Arcanum. Ooh. At the time, it was still too early to decide which direction was right, without sufficient experimental data. 
both. <laughs> but many already believed that if time continued to be reversed, human technology would only keep falling into decline, while Arcanum, which relies on personal ability, would rise again. Would you? It's true that Gnosis cannot be copied, verified by an independent third party, or comprehended through reasoning. Its but... nature decides that it cannot lay the foundation of science or be popularized to every ordinary person. It takes solid marble to build a castle, not slippery sand. Even so, what harm will it do to rely on Arcanum, when the underlying logic of all things has become unreasonable? Before the disagreement was settled, the storm in 1987 was predicted. Oh. We were ordered to return to the headquarters 24 hours before its arrival. Oh. But the prediction was not accomplished by Laplace. A captive from Manus Vindicte names the precise date of that storm. Mm? Our enemies, those lunatic xenophobes, valuing only pure blood, made it further than we did. Wait. Yes. We built observation stations. We made countless deductions. We developed multiple simulation models. But they figured it out. We made efforts. Out. We sacrificed life. We did whatever we could. Yet the result was that we didn't find any other regions immune to the storm, except the headquarters and another one in North America. Mm. In the end, 95% of the branch members were reversed. 87.9% of the equipment was destroyed, and 100% of our predictions failed. Oh my... Oh. In conclusion, our endeavor brought no achievements. As for the captive from Manus Vindicte, the delirium patient who claims that oracles flowed under his parietal bone. When we asked him how he learns the precise date of the storm, he burst into laughter. <laughs> Can't you hear it? Has God left you behind when he spread his grace? Then, he smashed his own skull with a handcuff. Yes, there was no doubt. He was an incurable lunatic. We use but the his insane nonsense was exactly the reason we survived the storm again. No matter how unreasonable or illogical it was, or how much a lie it sounded like. So we'd better believe we shouldn't go out in black today because the fish is swimming in the water. Hmm? We'd better believe in the existence of the non-physical, everlasting, transcendent world where everyone's soul is a number. <laughs> We better believe in the supreme existence, which caused I mean, they, the they're onto of time by merely casting its shadow. That means the life of individuals means nothing more than rubbish, and the world is but an imperfect ruin, for only the chosen ones will pass the trial, that the rest will be eliminated by the rain. How am I supposed to do that? Dang. Finally, I made up my mind to write to her. I didn't expect her to answer my questions. All I wanted was to confirm if she had survived that storm. <laughs> For the sake of, of our course. peaceful talk like about me. Jerombis. Yet what I heard from them was a simple announcement of her death. With only two words. She drowned. <laughs> she died. Oh, she died. Then it burned and turned to ashes in a second. On the same day, the first and only timekeeper who just took office, the twelve-year-old child, returned alone from the storm. Virgin. She told us the time in the outside world at that point. And that was how I knew she was right. It is right in front of you. What? If there is a god, why are you playing such a prank on us? After we had suffered from the collapse of all the existing orders and the failure of all the great laws. Hey. If this is what she calls a glimpse of the supreme existence, the moment of a flatus, do you have to present it in such a cruel way? Hey. The last two digits in the number of the year after that storm were exactly her name and her number. Seventy-seven. Wait, so... Oh. Oh. Wait, 30? Oh! 
The report ends. Yo, oh, two digits. That's the fully stop. Uh, the full stop. Incroyable! Incroyable! C'est vrai. Quelqu'un a vraiment fait cette prophétie. Someone did make that. Bertin and Sonetto will be thrilled to know what we found. Oh. Well done, Miss Sotheby. You performed as well as a formal investigator. We need to submit this report to your instructor immediately. Oh. Grabbing the papers tightly, Matilda turns around with excitement. I forgot I have this on. So if he isn't the person standing there. Ooh. What are you doing in other people's rooms? Uh. Hey. The report is snatched away. This is my personal item. You have no rights to take it. Okay. Well, we all work in the same place, don't we? Like. Please leave immediately. No. We all could be anywhere. It's all the foundation. This is a precious record that should have been submitted to the foundation. Yeah, she's like, what you doing? According to Administration and Regulations for Dispatch Personnel, St. Pablo Foundation Decree number 259, every member of the foundation, when acting as a field investigator, is required to create a comprehensive investigation report of all directions and promptly submit it. Yeah, tell them the rules and regulations. This is the only way they And listen. they are obliged to ensure the authenticity, objectivity, and impartiality of the report. Oh. No personal bias is allowed in the content. Oh. If you have read this report, miss, you should know that it's not even qualified to be filed. <sighs> but this is an emergency! It is. The timekeeper and Sonetto. And Regulus and Lilia and Mr. Apple. The Storm Reinforcement Act is still new to her. She can't think of any articles to support her view, her point of view. She racks her brain for words, but before she makes it, the other person starts talking with one of his eyebrows raised. I can tell from your uniform, you are a student of SPDM or... This is Laplace. Do you have your guardian's approval to leave the school, Miss Underage Student? <laughs> Oh, brother. Uh, approval? I don't need that. I am not a student. You are talking to the exceptionally promoted monitor assistant of SPDM. Uh, she's like, uh, I was a student, but I graduated. Also, does anyone know you're in here, sir? Your room. Does it have a number covered in dust? Here is my ID. Do you even know what's happening outside these doors, bro? She holds her ID card high as if she's holding the flag of liberty, but she is ignored. The adult walks directly to a swivel chair in the room and pays attention to an educational toy on the table. <gasps> Did you just ignore a formal administrator of the foundation? This monitor assistant will report every misbehavior of yours, every little bit of them. Where's Sotheby? Wordless, the monitor assistant can't be more embarrassed in her life she looks around just to find that Sotheby is gone luckily the chief assistant learns faster than she expects the familiar sing-song tone is making a report to her own tutor outside the half-open door Miss Wassel, we found that report here <laughs> she's like Miss Wassel, we found it the great Miss Bouinish and I discovered some important information <laughs> I came to you and Madame Z immediately after we read it uh oh we got higher ups mm -hmm. here Miss Bouinish why are you confronting Mr. Chair yeah we got the higher ups here to help so the beast stands at the door her head is tilted Two adults are behind her. Important ones. I didn't expect to see the second half of that report here in your room, Adler. This time, the owner of the voice can't be ignored. Exactly. I like she's too powerful. You gotta talk to her, bro. The swivel chair unwillingly turns around. Don't call me that, friend. Why not just call me Enigma? Just like everyone else. Relax. I know nicknames mean no harm. But I don't understand. How is a report filled with meaningless words of any concern to you, Madam Z? Uh, like Matilda said, we needed them. Hello? It provides information about the Arcanist group Bertin is now dealing with. Exactly. Maybe you listened to Matilda for two seconds. She could have told you that, bro. If possible, please give it to me. 
Yes, she said we need it. It's important to the current situation, bruv. Of course. How can I turn down a request from Constantine's chief of staff? Exactly, you can't. <laughs> Take it away. I hope you don't mind the mold on it. Well, now it's too gross. The researchers stay seated on the chair, casually hands out the report. Madame Z smiles. She seems glad to see that Enigma still has the energy to be sarcastic. But clearly, the monitor assistant can't tolerate such a blatant violation of staff regulations. Please pay attention to your manners and do not bring disgrace to the computing center, Mr. Rude. <laughs> Get him. Ms. Wasson taps her on the shoulder and quickly looks in the direction of the door. Ms. Buanish? Ms. Sotheby? You've done a great job. I'm sure what you have found would be Sotheby a great Sotheby did the best job, keeper. not gonna lie. Sotheby got, was like, Le I got these two. I got these two behind my back. <laughs> and? I will report your active performance in this mission to SPDM as soon as possible, Miss Boanish. We need to further analyze the files you found. The first on the scene could provide more detailed information. Let's get out of here. Contribution exceptionnelle! Active performance! <laughs> the keywords give this young monitor assistant giddy pleasure. She can't help but ignore everything else, Miss Musasa. <laughs> Oh la la, exceptional! Oh la la! Active! Come for Matilda. No, no, calm down, Matilda. I, I didn't accomplish it alone. Assistant Sotheby also played a significant role. The, probably the most significant. Hooray! <laughs> I, part of me wishes Sotheby said yippee instead of hooray, but <laughs> it's cute too. A loud cheer interrupts Matilda's mumbling. That is to say, Miss Burnish, we can start preparing the balloons and flowers for the twist ball. <laughs> um, Gore. Speaking of which, this monitor assistant still needs to think about it. Uh, by the way, just call me Matilda. She struggles to get out of Sotheby's passionate hug. The great joy brought by Miss Musan makes her actions clumsy. <laughs> Cheering and discussing, the girls leave the room. Madam Z. Ooh. Okay. Okay. That activated my, uh... Anyway. Madam Z clear carefully puts the valuable report away. The researcher swivels the chair again and hides himself in the fortress made of dusty... Dude, this guy got allergies. This guy's lungs are probably freaking clotted, which is dust. This guy's probably barely breathing. He talks through cabinets and equipment in a slow there manner. There will be no advance in human technology. You think so? Even the Madam Z has given up on the study of theoretical physics and become a politician. No. I've never thought of that. She turns the door with a faint smile. Click. The door is closed. Oh gosh. We continued. Okay. Where are we head next? Oh! Is that the robot? The thick robot? Oh, and I finally get the thing I need to, uh. To finally. I can finally update my island. I've been buying. My goal has been to buy every. Like, one part of every wilderness pack, right? And now I can finally add them because I got some pretty cool parts ever since one point Ever since 1.5 I've been collecting a lot of cool ones. So Expect a wilderness update soon The dramas have ended All is profoundly hushed in this cold and dark room The researcher sighs and starts settling the messy papers and dust tools on the table why is it mistaken for a utility room? Is it because of the mess? <laughs> Metallic footsteps come from outside the door. I am astonished by the fact it's that you are interacting with robot. others. <laughs> Again, so which came first? Her body or her awakening? You know? I will always want to know that question. 
Thank you. Another trespasser. They broke in. They broke in. Your door was open, sir. The robot in charge of the Laplace Scientific Computing Center shrugs and refuses to make any comments. She has already heard all the information she needs in the corridor. Wait, so she's in charge? Ooh. If it Laplace? was a complaint that you were making, you she's know, that girl. It is within your rights to submit an interdepartmental complaint within seven days after the incident. I like how they gave her like hair, like a braid in like metal stuff. Like her hair is completely made of metal, but they said, you're gonna have style, miss. Also, why no clothes? <laughs> I'm like, woman, they gave you a belly button at all, but you don't got no clothes on other than this jacket. Don't bother. She's naked. That file means nothing to me. I didn't file it because it is a report against the rules. Why bother to submit such a log Mr. full Apple of personal feelings and emotional behaviors to our great, rigorous foundation? Is that so? I am gratified but to find really that cool you still looking. have some sense. Ooh. I too am gratified that you still have no idea that I was being sarcastic. <laughs> oh, that was sarcasm. Dang, she really does talk like a white woman robot. If you know what I mean. <sighs> Never mind. Oh, that what was do you sarcasm. Want from me, Madam Lucy. <laughs> Lucy. He asks as he bends down and organizes the papers scattered all over the place. This is the best effort he cares to make to receive a guest. You went all the way to this dusty, rundown place so hurriedly that you even forgot to put on that pathetic mask. This is not because of some old files, I assume. The faceless robot inclines its head in agreement. Certainly. I hope you can be the cryptographer of the Manus Vindictae's ritual. You are still the best. You are asking me, a human, Oh, to decode human? the ritual of a pure blood arcanist group? <gasps> oh, Frank, no, you want me to be freaking. Freaking, you want me to be beheaded, bro? What the freak? I don't see how I'll be helpful to this project. Well, if they catch him, they're gonna be like, are you a human? <laughs> pure blood arcanist group? But didn't they want Schneider? Did they also think Schneider was an Arcanist? I forgot. If they're a pure-blooded Arcanist group, why would they take in Schneider, who is a human? <laughs> and Burton, who is half-human. You know? It's a little... Their actions, you know, don't really match up with their the words, but we'll keep going. The researcher keeps unfolding more dusty folders without raising his eyes from the table. Well, you evaluate our value. Test us in experiments you set. Prove the hypothesis. Well, they by might have been probably been planning to kill them anyway. And start all over again. I don't know. You repeat the process like a roaring locomotive that pulls the research center out of this chaotic disaster. You question not what is ahead of you, nor whether the path you've taken will be regular or easy. The only idea you planted into your little brain is to move forward to improve. Dude, do you have no respect for nobody other than Madam Z? Dang. Thank you for your compliment. Credit She's goes your to boss. everyone. <laughs> that was not even a... Uh, Miss Mirgara. Guess you agree. A life without creativity is not worth living. And that's the life that I wake up to every day. I'm no longer the person you thought you came here for. Yeah, when was the last time you showered? Question. I'll never be able to combine Is your hair greasy? Is that why your hair looks like that? You wash and it? I'll never comprehend even the slightest part of it. Your room dirty? The air is even dirty in this place? Do you shower? I am useless to you. He squares up the paper on his desk in a grumpy manner, making a huge knocking noise. I don't expect someone made of tin to understand a human mind. But I beg of you, leave me alone. 
Dang, dude's depressed. He really might not shower, actually. The robot ignores his emotional speech and keeps telling. <laughs> Girl. The work of analyzing the masks of Manus Vindicte did not go well. A side effect occurs in the researchers, and it is getting worse. <gasps> the isolation wards on the basement level are overwhelmed. Uh oh. That is why that there was per. Yeah, I would be upset too if I was like, oh, dang it, me! <laughs> what what the purple scene. stuff coming Have out of my face? Have you the experiment? Not yet. We have conducted the Arcanum imaging experiment on the masks and found a component which also exists in the raindrops of the storm. Mm. But knowing what it is composed of does not help explain how it works. What we're looking for is the original ritual that the menace cast on them. Ah. Uh. <laughs> you are Why trying you to figure them? out one's career planning from one's physical examination report. I wonder why it is not working. <laughs> Even if somehow you manage to find the original ritual, you still need a proper environment to test it, which is the outside world with a coming storm. Ooh. The researcher turns, uh, turns to her, wisdom and sarcasm glowing in his eyes. That's why we can't tell if we're getting results. Even if we had the right ritual, proper permission from the Foundation to travel, and strong-minded volunteer subjects. Experiments performed in the Ivory Tower won't succeed because... An experiment about the storm can only be done in a storm. There is a fly in my room. Glad to see your brain is not rusty yet. <laughs> it only took you three sentences to draw the conclusion which took the seminar a week to reach. Dang. That proves you are capable of the project. <laughs> the robot in charge puts a document on the table. The <gasps> history maintenance team has forecast mm. different critical points of this storm. Foundation investigators Marcus. are on their way. Oh, Marcus is from the foundation? Oh, and that's a foundation emblem. Oh, okay. I didn't know Marcus was f foundation coded. If Manus Vindicte still plans to accelerate the storm, like what they have done in 1929, there will be a high possibility that their people will show up at the transformation point of history and society, also known as the critical point of time, the center of the storm. Ooh. Your sister, Greta <gasps> Hoffman, is oh, also yeah, one no. of the investigators. That is his sister. Yep. I guess his hair isn't greasy. Their hair is just like that. She was probably the sibling that showers, though. So. Just saying. Oh. I have no interest in any Hoffmans other than myself. We have different perspectives. Okay, well, I don't know if that's enough to just not care about her. It is okay. You might as well drop I the last name, I am just here to then. inform you that. <laughs> You don't if care. any of the investigators successfully send the information of the ritual back, the research about the immunity of the storm will be conducted immediately. Take your time and be mentally prepared. But once the storm alert is issued, we only have 24 hours to verify the feasibility <gasps> of the ritual. Oh. You want to know something? You're his boss. He can't tell you no. Just say you're going to work on this thing, whether you like it or not or else you're fired. I wish you will be fully prepared by then. I no wonder they made me do this first. The robot gets out of the room, leaving him no right ch right to choose. Her feet uh, crash into the floor, making a, making a st stealing sound. Enigma's eyes flicker toward the document. The face on top of, on top is familiar to him. He put he pulls out the drawer and takes out a scrap of paper. This is the last code he didn't give anyone. One thing is for sure now. The age of humans has come to an end. Oh. Is this Jujutsu Kaisen? I'm kidding. <laughs> we have to get rid of all the humans cuz they're ruining everything. They all got to go for real. But he's a human. Okay, that's it. Okay. Okay, guys, in the next episode, we will be doing... La Singua! Yes, I'm going to start on that right away. I should have done this a long time ago, but I didn't. 
Thank you guys for watching. I'm gonna start it uh, right now. So thank you guys, and I'll see you guys in the next episode of Reverse 1999. Make sure you like, comment, and subscribe. Join the Discord. Check me out on TikTok and Twitter. And yeah, uh, check it out.